when we look at the homogeneous problem x prime equals ax, it's pretty trivial to see that x being just equal to zero is a solution. It's a constant solution because then its derivative is equal to zero, both sides of the equation equal zero. We call this kind of solution an equilibrium solution. Or sometimes we will call it a fixed point. Now, not all equilibria are the same. Imagine we put a ball at the bottom of the inside of a bowl. Now, if we get it at the bottom, that's an equilibrium solution. If we then turn the ball over and put a ball at the top, well, if we get it in just the right spot, it'll stay there. And that's an equilibrium solution, too. But when we're on the inside of the bowl, if we perturb the position a little bit to the right or left, it will tend to go back towards the equilibrium spot. Whereas when we're on top of the inverted bowl, if we move away just a little bit, then the solution will get ever farther away from that equilibrium. In the first case, we say the equilibrium is stable. And in the second case, we say it is unstable. If the solution stays close to the equilibrium after being perturbed a bit, then we say the equilibrium is stable. More technically, we could make it stay arbitrarily close by making the perturbation small enough. In our linear equation, stability depends on the eigenvalues of the constant matrix A. Let's specialize on the two by two case. So we have two eigenvalues, lambda one and lambda two. I'm going to assume they're unequal because otherwise it gets a little bit more delicate to discuss. Now, if these are real numbers and both negative, or less than or equal to zero, then it would be stable. If they're complex eigenvalues and the real part is less than or equal to zero, then it will be stable. On the other hand, if one of those eigenvalues is, if the eigenvalues are real and one is positive, then it's unstable. Or if the eigenvalues are complex, with a positive real part, then the equilibrium is unstable at the origin. Sticking with the two by two real case, there's a tool for visualizing the solutions. Solution here has two components, x1 of t and x2 of t. So we can make a plot, a parameterized plot, where the parameter is t, or time, and then that becomes a curve in the x1, x2 plane. We'll do that for a bunch of initial conditions, and then get an idea or a portrait of how the solutions can behave. This x1, x2 plane is usually called the phase plane. Now, except for some special edge cases, there are four main types of fi a fixed point that we can observe. So in the case of a node, we would have real eigenvalues of the same sign. So if both eigenvalues are negative, it'll be stable. If both eigenvalues are positive, then it'll be unstable. But either way, it's a node. So I'll try to sketch the stable case. I'll do some computer-generated figures at the end that'll look much better than these hand-drawn scratches. But in the node, in the case of a node, solutions basically just all get pulled into the origin or 
pushed away in the unstable case. There's a little bit of sideways motion or a little bit of circular motion to it, but for the most part, things are just attracted or repelled straight in. The case of a saddle is the result when we have real eigenvalues that have different signs. Since that means at least one of them, since that means exactly one of them is positive, a saddle is always unstable. So at the saddle point, you have these two directions that are actually corresponding to the eigenvectors. They make an x through the origin. And then that sort of divides things into four quadrants. So there's one direction which is associated with the negative eigenvalue where things go inward, and then the other direction with the positive eigenvalue where things go outward. Now, if you happen to start exactly on the inward trajectory, you'll go all the way into the origin. If you start exactly on the outward tra trajectory, you'll go linearly away from the origin. The fourth major type of fixed point is a spiral point. This is the result when we have truly complex eigenvalues. If the real part of those eigenvalues is a negative or non-positive number, it'll be stable. If the real part is positive, then it'll be unstable. And spiral lives up to the name. There are no longer any sort of linear solutions because there are no real eigenvectors. And in the stable case, things just spiral in towards the origin. These lines can never cross, which makes it a little tricky to draw them. Now, a special case of the spiral that's worth mentioning is called the center. And that's when the eigenvalues are pure imaginary. So we're at the boundary between stable and unstable. Now they are stable, but in kind of a weak sense or a neutral sense. So if you, it's imagine you push the ball away on a flat table, it doesn't return to the equilibrium, it doesn't get any farther, it just stays where it is. So this is an analogous situation. And in fact, instead of spirals, you get closed trajectories. It's easiest to look at phase portraits with the help of a computer. Here, I'm using Mathematica. Here is a two by two matrix. It has eigenvalues negative six and negative three. So this is going to be a stable equilibrium at the origin, and the type is going to be a node because the eigenvalues have the same sign. And when we look at the solutions, so we'll notice that there are two eigenvectors here. The one with the larger eigenvalue, negative 3, is the eigenvector negative 1, 1. So that's this line from top left to bottom right. And then the other eigenvector is 1, 2, so it would be something like this line here. And if you chose the initial conditions so that you were exactly on that line parallel to 1, 2, then you would stay on it and go straight into the origin. But if you have a mixture of both eigenvectors in your initial condition, then what ends up happening is that the one associated with negative 6 decays very quickly, and the one that is associated with negative 3 decays a little bit more slowly. So what happens is that you end up getting more parallel to this direction with the larger eigenvalue. So as time evolves, the other component is decaying away faster, and the component that dominates is the one that's parallel to this eigenvector here. Now, if I just reverse the signs of these uh, eigenvalues by taking negative a instead, all that does is reverse all the arrows. So it's like we reverse time, and you go from stable to unstable node.
All right, here's another system. And it's got two real eigenvalues of different signs. So this is going to be a saddle. And because one of them is positive, that means the saddle is always unstable. So now what we see is if we were perfectly in the direction of the stable eigenvector, if we were perfectly in this direction here, then we would in fact travel all the way down into the origin. But of course it's almost impossible to actually end up perfectly on that line. So what ends up happening is that um, whatever you, whatever component you have in the other direction grows exponentially. And so after a little bit, you go off either positive or negative in the direction of this one, two eigenvector. So everybody ends up looking like that. So solutions tend to swoop in towards the origin and then peel away again. In this case, if I negate A, right, then I just switch the role of the positive and the negative. And so now what was formerly the stable direction becomes the unstable direction or the primary unstable direction. And then everybody tends to curl into that direction, positive or negative. And then when we have complex eigenvalues, that's always going to be a conjugate pair. So the real part tells us that the magnitude will decay. So it'll be an inward spiral and the thing will be stable. The imaginary part tells us how fast the spiral goes around. There are no pure linear solutions anymore because the eigenvectors aren't real. So everything just spirals into the origin. If I were to use negative A, then these become positive real parts, and then it becomes unstable and everything spirals outward. And then the special case where the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, that's called a center. And in that case, the, uh, the um, orbits we often call them, or the trajectories, will be closed. They all close up um, either ellipses or even more specially, they could be circles.